Thanks for staying with us. So, we're still having our African-themed Christmas celebration, and we like those nice African-themed stories. But today, <laughs> we saw a story that uh, the Nobel laureate, Walesho Inka, was saying about religion, saying that um, religion is Nigeria's number one problem. It was during an interview with a uh, professor of African literature, Dr. Louisa Egbunike, and he was saying that Nigeria, that, that we have um, corseted religion, meaning that we've overindulged, protective, we've overindulged in this concept called religion. And he's saying that um, religion has become the number one problem for Nigerians. Hope is very well, but hope itself can become putrid, which is decay, can become rotten. So um, he's saying that um, hope, if, it is on, if it's for unearned advantages in the society, it can become putrid. If religion becomes an excuse for flouting the law. So he, he gave two examples, which I thought was interesting. He said that, if you, if you recall, a legislator turned governor um, claimed to be, a, was, can claim to be a pedophile and indulge in cross-border child trafficking, celebrating child marriage, consummating that event, which is against the law of the nation, and says he has the right to do it because religion permits. That in itself is part of what he was talking about. Secondly, he gave another example, saying that if you can use religion to excuse a building church, building a church which collapses on the head of humanity, many of them not from Nigeria, several from South Africa, then you say it was caused by supernatural forces, then also it's part of what we're talking about, religion being our problem. So this was an interesting conversation because we've had a lot of religious discussions on this show. But as the season is here of celebration, is a time to, is a moment to reflect mm. on what he's saying. That is there any way, is there, is there any iota of truth in what he's saying? And how can we ensure that we, um, religion is no more, what is, is, is not just the opium of the people, but it can be that source of hope indeed for Nigerians. So let, let, let's have this conversation. What are your thoughts on what he said? Is religion really our problem? Or as Elijah uh, like Muhammad said months back, if you recall, back in July, I think, Elijah Lai Mohammed said that religion is not our problem or ethnicity is not our problem. Our real problem is, I can't remember what he said, but I think it's more us, us mm. we the people. So if we fix us, can religion still stand? I mean, that's the conversation. Let's, let's so can, call, let, call us on 081-270-53687-091-390-7694. You can also send messages on YouTube and Facebook. We'll be happy to share your messages. Yes, Nima, go ahead, please. Yeah, so religion has become a tool in the harm uh, hands of evil has also become an excuse for every evil done over the years. So for, for me, because the people who do this and use religion are people, so our problem is us, really. In those days when, they, when we used to revere religious clerics, revere them, it's because they stood for values that were clean, clear and transparent and, and easy to see. So you cannot find a religious person politicizing or ethnicizing truth, they will stick to it and stick to it honestly. And so you hear comments like, be God-fearing, so that when you're sitting in an office, you're actually God-fearing. But these days now, we've watered religion down so much that somebody will do evil. I'm going to talk about Muslims who will say, they'll do evil and they'll do some two rakas of forgiveness, seeking mm. forgiveness at night, at night because God is often forgiving. As if God is just there to play, to be used to play games. Some people will carry out outrageous evil, clear evil that they cannot accept unto themselves, and say, when it is done to somebody else, they say, really, just backing for it. Mm. But when it is done to, to, your, to yourself, they say, really, just banning for it. As if, uh, we don't even know the right. word religion anymore. It's yeah. too rampant. We will be talking to somebody, and the person will be saying, no, when I go on the edge and come back, everything is just fine. Right. Got you know, you. Let me come to you, the urge is something that you mm. attain for as a height in your fear of God. Not a way to wash away to your not sins. Not a way to wash away your sins and go back to them as if yeah. repentance is something you just go and, yeah. you know, yeah. do it again and again. So, that's the question. Is, is it us, the people, it's or us, the, the people, people. So, Go ahead. I'll, 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 I would follow the line that my pastor said years back, that um, culture trumps religion. Hmm. And I think that once we understand it, Culture trumps religion. In every society, their religion is a merge, is an immersion of their culture as well as the religion. The same Christianity we practice here, you go to 
the Southern American countries. They do it in a totally different way. Mm. And they are also Christians. And they are calling on the name of Jesus, calling God. But their culture merged with it. You go to Europe, they merged their culture with it. What we've done in Nigeria is that we've merged our, we've merged our culture. And culture is not traditional. We've met, our culture is our way of living. Let me define culture well. We've merged culture with religion in a way excusing, re giving religion the bad name. But the religion itself, if you study every religious book, it's clear. This is good, love good, excuse evil. Full stop. We have created a culture of evil and we find excuses in everything to perpetrate our evil. So it is the culture of evil that we need to deal with and not demonizing any religion. Mm -hmm. Because a pastor and his wife over the weekend did something horrible and said it was the devil. Mm. So just the same way we demonize the devil, we demonize our traditional beliefs, mm. we are demonizing the religion we are currently operating, it is the culture of not taking responsibility. So let me, let me, let me try to rationalize what you're saying. So if we have a, we talked about discrimination last week. Mm. If we have a culture of discrimination, for example, mm -hmm. and then we discriminate against poor people, so um, we think, oh, because you're poor, you cannot, I can, I can, I can take your child to work for me and mm. to sleep with my husband because mm -hmm. you, you, you can't say anything. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I feel that, so sleep with, my, sleep with that girl, whatever, and we are, go back home, take 10,000 naira, that's it. Because we have a culture of discrimination, you have no right to talk, I am a madam. So it's that, it's that that we now bring in, even though you're a pastor. Mm -hmm. So we now inf mm -hmm. in, in, infuse that culture with, with our, cult, with with our culture. And that's why it's looking, that's why Wale Shega will say, Religion is our problem. But really, mm. what you're saying is that religion is not the problem. We, the people, are the problem. Yeah. Let me come to you, Yeah, this reminds me of um, this madman, Gandhi's quote. I heard it a long time as a child. He says, I like your Christ. I do not like your Christians. Your Christians mm. are so unlike your Christ. Mm. And we know he was Buddhist, I think. Mm -hmm. And that's the truth, really, about our religion. We read the books. We know what it says. But somehow, we find people um, have different interpretations for it per time per circumstance, mm -hmm. per, per perversions, mm -hmm. you know, and things like that. So it is truly the people of Nigeria, now I'm talking about us specifically, that are the problem. We have the culture of materialism, and that mm. is what is sweeping across our country right now. We will do anything for money, we will mm. sell mm. anyone mm. for money, we will kill anyone for money. We are kidnapping, we are raping, we are kidnapping children, we are raping mothers. There's no empathy, no conscience anymore. And that is not found in the books of our religion. Our religion preaches peace, it preaches love, kindness. But people are not doing that because for us, what is most important, and this is a blame to all of us, we have put money on a pedestal. So someone who has money, however that person got that money, that person is important. That person is a role model. That person makes sense. We have it so much that when you talk to somebody, when you're telling someone the truth, the person looks at you and says, how much do you have, Seth? And everybody agrees, like, yes, how much well, do you have, that Seth, that you dare to open your mouth mm -hmm. in this conversation? Mm -hmm. So that is what has eaten deeply. And that is why we see this materialism, we see it as corruption in our government, where a government official understands that it's not what I do for the development of mm. my community or for my state. It's how much money I'm able to gather, build a huge mansion right. in my community and have people come and worship me as I give them little crumbs and little crumbs and they go away. So that's what's our problem, really. Mm. Nigerians, we need to uh, let me, talk let, to Let's ourselves. go on a break. I really like that interesting angle. Let's go on a break. When we come up, we dig further. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Thanks for staying with us. So we are still discussing religion, and especially because the Nobel laureate, Wale Shoyinka, Professor Wale Shoyinka, was saying that religion is our problem. And um, one, other, one other thing that, I mean, he said two other major things that he said, actually, but I'll start with one. He said that religion must be put in its place in order for people to be liberated as rational beings who can tackle the problems of existence in a rational, collective way, rather than by insisting that it's only one route that society can be transformed. So, in this regard, does religion <coughs> hinder or hamper our development where we're not being rational in how we do things? Every legal thing, if you, instead of you to, a child is sick and he has a headache, the right thing is, oh, you give him paracetamol, check his temperature, or you pray for the person and you activate your faith. Now, of course, miracles happen, the child gets well. But therefore, when you now replicate that same system for another child, 
The headache doesn't yeah, go. Horrible. So you, one child was healed. The second child wasn't healed. I was saying, give the child medicine, but you keep praying because you know that this one, and actually what, what's wrong with the second child is much more than a headache. <laughs> but because, you, because miracle happened with child A, you insist that you know, this same system will have work. So you don't take that child to the hospital. And you now continue to pray until the child passes on. So the people are now, so according to what they here is here, that religion doesn't allow us to be rational. You now begin to activate your faith in areas that should also use science. I mean, do you hmm. agree or do you think that we can still activate faith regardless of the situation that we find ourselves? No, I think he wasn't talking about us activating faith. Nigerians are prayerful people. Well, godliness is another matter entirely. Hmm. So we pray, we pray everything. And because affirmations work now, and those people that are doing all the psychology cancer, yes, yes family whatever. therapies. Uh -huh. So we know I affirmations work. And we've known our mothers, those days, we have always used a lot of magic, a to pursue any evil. So maybe an impending evil is being projected to happen. We just simply say it's not our portion and it's not going to happen. And, and we get to get maybe just a small bit of the, the, the effect of it. But then, the truth is, um, as well, it's saying... I want you to understand what I'm saying. Science is replicable. You can replicate it, use this thing, and you get better. But we're saying that, what he's saying is that religion is going to allow you to be rational, mm -hmm. to think, to liberate your society. So we're saying that, is, there, is religion therefore hindering this liberation of our people? So the, what I was going to land on is that the, the point of us being faithful people is not the issue here. Uh -huh. The issue here is that the elites have always used religion as a tool again. So rather than have government make policies that, you know, would last and rep be replicated, so we have a pandemic, Nigeria is also researching, and by the end of the day, we too, we have our vaccine. Or we possibly even have the drug. There's nothing stopping us. And we're on that track because we had some institutions that have failed that would have availed us over the years. But because now the same people who are there in office will just simply tell the people who are faithful that your faith would, you know, help mm. you, and then kill every form of research, Kill every form that is supposed to be for research. Divert what you need to divert. Yeah. And the people are left at helpless mm. at the point that, okay, all I have at this point now is faith. faith. So we should, be talking, we should be talking more to even the people that we put in office. If we want to change things, change our ways. Yeah, you know, um, there's, we know that um, Muslims especially believe that, uh, especially when wrong happens, and when you're not a Muslim, and you hear the way they accept death, and sometimes some injustices, and say, Haka Allah is so it's the will of God. A part of you, because you're not part of that religion, you don't get it. Like, how are you not angry? How are you not demanding for justice? How are you not expecting difference? And you have just let it to God. And I feel that, yes, that is an important part of, you know, life. To understand that, yes, God is, uh, you know, God has taken care of it. But it has also been taken advantage of by yes. wicked people. So people are getting away with lots of injustice because in the end, you just come to sit down and they'll tell you that is how, if God had not willed it, it would not have happened. But now I'm seeing a cry from the north. There's so much insecurity. There's so much happening there. And people are screaming and crying because, yes, we understand that God has got it, but he has put some people as leaders in these communities and things are not going right. People, those children that have been kidnapped, the insecurity, the banditry, that is not right. Why would God will that? Mm. That's my own question. Why would God will that constantly? Why would God want to see children taking it, snatched away from their parents? Why would God want to see people just burnt mm. in a bus? Mm. People in a bus just, just, just set ablaze just like that. So there is, there is religion. I understand oh. what he's trying to say. Yes, there's religion, but we cannot allow religion to the point that we do not... Push for justice mm -hmm. so that things can get better. Absolutely. We need to look at it differently Thank you, now. Mariam, because, in fact, you've just got to a very soft spot. Because that's, that's, that's what the professor was trying to drive at. That religion beclouds our judgment because everything that happens, we see the bandage, just like you said. I'm more alone. I'm, just, I'm more alone. Mm -hmm. God, that's how God is. But the truth is we got to wake up. Mm -hmm. You know, and I, and I really like that point. Let me take this call and I'll come to you talk away. Yeah. Good morning. Are you there? Umar from Kaduna, I believe. Good morning. Uh, good morning. Yes. You're alive. Go ahead, please. Yes, indeed. Religion has become one of our greatest problems in this country. Not that religion itself is the problem. Mm -hmm. I guess it's the way we practice our own religion in the country that is the problem. Yes, that's what I would like to say. Hello? Yes, we can very yeah, can yeah, hear you. Thank you very much, Umar. Yes, yeah, thank you. Hey, it's okay. Hello? Wait, go ahead. 
So I was going to say that, um, you know, there's some things that have, that have happened that are very, very surprising and shocking that you wonder, are these people educated people? You know, you get someone that is told, your child is breached, do surgery. And they will say, let my pastor come and pray. The child will turn around. And I know someone who's waited for years. The woman and the child died while they were waiting for the pastor to come and lay hands and pray on a case where they've been told is critical, please do surgery. The husband said he's not going to sign the surgery papers until the pastor comes to pray because they are not allowed to do surgery. Many people have not gotten transfused, have died without blood because religion did not allow them to get their religious beliefs does not permit transfusion of blood. And they'll say, if God wants to save me, God will save me. If God does not save me, it means I'm meant to die. Those are the interpretation that we give scriptures that makes people wonder, like the way um, Professor is saying that, what is, religion is our problem. Well, religion is not the problem. is that we refuse to understand that God has given you capacity, knowledge, brain, to do some things for yourself. And so we mustn't worship things that we have capacity to do, uh, um, to to fix and work on. And, I, and when we say that culture, this is the culture. Because it's the people that move, that is the Christianity, they go into Islam, they go into any religion, they do the same thing. It's the same thing. Mm -hmm. So it's, the, it's not the religion that is the problem, it is the people and the culture of the people, the way of life of our people that is giving this religion, this, this different religion, a negative name. And we need to start talking to ourselves that let us open up our minds mm. so that when a pastor, a pastor is not God, if a pastor says you should do something that is not rational, don't do it. There's some, we've, we've read some inhuman things that pastors have said they should do and they did it. Pastors flog people in church and they do all sorts of things pastors because we feel spray like... insecticide in people's mouths. And they died. We see those videos. So let's, let me take this course. Good morning, are you there? Oh, spiritual leader. You're live. Go ahead, please. Oh, okay. so, so, see, I'll take some messages now, but it's, it's important, when, when we started this conversation, mm. we almost said religion is not the problem. It's not our problem. That it's the people, mm -hmm. we are the people who have problems. Mm -hmm. But also talk, we also agree that we can infuse, or what we do is infuse our culture. Yeah. We're also saying that this culture is also, some of this wicked culture we infuse into religion. Mm. We're also saying that religion has indeed stopped a, a whole community of people from speaking because they believe that it's that how God wants it. Yeah. But we're now saying, if we're going to go with what Professor Wolocheka is saying, that listen, we need to be liberated. Yeah. And liberation is therefore saying, we call it spade a spade. This child should not have died because mm -hmm. you should have given this child surgery. This mm -hmm. child should have gone under surgery. Yeah. This child, don't say that's how God wants it. That this child, this child does not deserve to die. Mm -hmm. let, let me quickly do a clarity on in a line earlier, June, the comment that you said in Hausa. So when something has happened, mm. to deal with grief is to accept it as part of will. Not to accept the cause of it. Okay. No, no, no. So that's not a religion. Because the same religion, where that comment is made, says that if a people do not change their ways, God will not change their condition. Mm. It's a Quranic verse. So we, we Nigerians cannot continue to say, no, doctors, so or no hospital. Mm. All through my problems with my deep religious knowledge, I went to hospital. Yes. Yeah. I took my doctor's advice. And every time I decided not to take it, I regretted it. So I know better. And a lot of people, we, you don't accept the cause. But the, the final, finality of certain things, you just accept it accept to it. help you deal with grief. Mm. Because if it wasn't going to be, you would have found a solution. Mm. And you should be on the path to seeking a solution. So we cannot say China is making reels. And here we're not funding research in schools. Mm. The countries where all these religions came from, they had research. All the mathematics and everything that I know in history were found in, in, in the Arabia. Why, why then are we accepting religion without accepting the knowledge so or the will to, to research and find solutions? Mm. So, yes, again, are we so, saying that that's the interpretation of man now? Yes, now the say, cultural... Because we have that where people have not gotten justice because mm. they have been told... That is, that let is the will be. of God. Let and it let be, it let be. it go. And then God will sort of sort it out instead of so, following the system that needs and that need to justice. Yes. That's what I have justice. to go a break. But to get, us to, to get us to solutions, we should be inventing yes. Yes. and reinventing ways to Our leaders to, also to depend on God. Mm. Our leaders is that our leaders. Our leader will say, let us pray. No, that's let's go and go. Let's go and break. When we come back, we dig further. Stay with us, we'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Thanks for staying with us. So we're still discussing this matter 
of um, religion being a problem, according to Professor Wally Shoinka. And before the break, I had said that our leaders also depend on God. A lot of times, they ask us to pray. When situations happen, they, say, they tell us to pray and trust God for some kind of a solution. So in this, where even our own leaders to depend on God, mm -hmm. how therefore can we have liberation, if is that what, what uh, Professor Wally Shoinka is asking for, that religion should be put in its place so that we can be liberated. And that's really the conversation we're having. Mm -hmm. Do we need the liberation? And do we need to remove religion so we can have liberation? And that, that's, that's really the, the conversation that we're having. We yes. need to remove excuses so that we can have liberation. As the, the religion mm -hmm. has become mm -hmm. an excuse. Mm -hmm. Because I, I'm, I'm reading here, when our president wasn't feeling fine, you know, the, our leaders find a way to still pray and fast, and then they go and seek proper mm -hmm. medical treatment. So, when the president wasn't feeling fine, Muslim clerics declared 10 days prayer and fasting for Buhari. That was in well, was 2017, when he was in the hospital in the abroad. That's it right. happened. Um, and Calabar groups also planned seven days fasting and prayer. 65 Christians in um, begin fasting and prayer in MFM. In 2017, you know, there was a whole lot because people thought the, presidency was going, the president was going to die. And he didn't but, die. But while we well, were praying, people. this is the wisdom Actually, I want us to get. While we were praying for the president, the president was seeking medical, the best national. of medical care in the UK. So what we do here is we pray and go to hospitals that are overcrowded, where, they don't, where they don't have, we don't have access to good medical care, and we're trusting that the prayer alone will solve the problem. Even the president, though he is asking us to pray for him, was seeking medical care. Mm. That is the balance we need to have. So that when we are fighting insecurity, we are saying the president was in Saudi Arabia in October 2021, and he said he prayed, offered fervent prayers for the insecurity challenges in Nigeria. That's not all. Because while you were praying for your own health, you were getting treated. Let's also have the extensive, intensive um, strategy session that we're going to in implement. The intelligence are going to use to protect people. So we're not just praying on one hand without doing the corresponding work necessary. Mm, okay. It is faith and works. It's yeah. one Let me take alone. this call. Mm. Adolphus, well said. Adolphus, are you yeah. there? You're live. Yeah, Go ahead, please. Good morning, ladies. Morning. The biggest problem we have in Nigeria today is the church. That's the biggest industry in Nigeria today. The only book that they translated to us is the Bible. Why didn't they translate physics, mathematics, chemistry into Yoruba, Hausa, and the Igbo so that we can break into technology? So look at it that way. That is why we are having problems in Nigeria today. Most of the big churches we have in Nigeria are the ones causing all these things. So every Tuesday or Wednesday, you see millions of people in one church or the other. What are they doing? Instead of them to be in the factory where they are manufacturing and bringing goods to our people so that we can export and import. Do you understand what mm. I'm saying? Thank you. So what, Thank you. So what Adolphus is saying is also relevant. He's saying that, listen, these people that we have, this influx of Nigerians in churches, we need them in the manufacturing mm -hmm. plants. Mm. And even the textbooks we read, the truth is that, We've always said here at this table that in, in China, France, Germany, they learn this technology in their language. They mm. understand it in their indigenous language. If somebody from uh, Nigeria is being taught engineering with his indigenous language, there's a possibility that he'll actually invent. But we are, we are teaching him in a foreign language. How would he understand? How can he recreate what he doesn't fully understand? And so it's probably part of this issue we're saying that we are... We, but, as you said, religion is an excuse. Mm. And, and I pastors are another about, excuse. Yeah. When we point fingers and say, pastors are yeah, the they problem, mean, yeah. they are the biggest industry, we are also oh, excusing, giving, using them as an excuse. Nobody is holding or trapping your brain. Yeah, and then you know how, where you mentioned you put religion in its place, and I think Jesus, was, Jesus said that beautifully when he said, give to Caesar what is Caesar's Thank and to you, God what is God. So he paid his tax. He did not say, see, I am Jesus Christ, the Son of God. <laughs> the whole of this earth is all to me. My father owes this earth, and I'm not going to pay tax. He did what, and, and he did that to show an example exactly. that you must do. There are systems in place mm -hmm. so that this, your world that you're living in, this earth that you're living in will work. Mm -hmm. There has to be, um, we, we cannot constantly keep giving excuses. I don't know if you've ever tried to employ um, any staff, and they've told you, I can't come on Wednesdays because... Um, are going for, and, and, you know, mm. no, apart from service, I'm a worker or mm. something. But you're supposed to be earning money for your family. Mm. He said, yes, but my pastor has told me 
that this job, if I cannot come on Wednesday, I, I cannot take the job. And then you find him still on the streets looking for a job because... So sometimes I think... I don't know if it's the pastors that tell these people or the people that feel that it's their own way of worshipping God that they give a day where they're supposed to be working and any money to spend in church. So we need to put these things in the right perspective. Yeah, yeah, I mean, well, well, there's always people for miracles. Let me, let me take this call from Ebenezer. Yeah. Ebenezer from Abuja, are you there? The miracles we are looking yes, for. Yes. You're live. Go ahead, please. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I, I would rather prefer to see people are hiding under religion mm -hmm. in Nigeria. Not that religion is the problem. People are hiding other religions. Yep. In the 60s, in the 70s, we see that we are having this group. There are, there are religions in Nigeria that people are practicing. But our culture is the problem. Like one of the really said, we bring our attitude, our culture into religion, which I'm called ignorance. People are saying, uh, people are gathering in the church, gathering in the something they are not manufacturing. Are we practicing religion more than China? China has different religion, and they are what they are doing every, every day. Yes. They, practice, they are practicing different religion. All those people are practicing religion. But yeah. our own, our attitude, because we are ignorant. So people are hiding, they know that we are ignorant. They know that we don't know anything. So they are hiding under that religion to yeah. perpetuate it. Somebody, th thank you very much, Ebenezer. Somebody was suggesting that. This is a difficult suggestion. But somebody said that. Why don't we make religion so private that you can only worship in your houses? Mm. You can't go to churches. You can't have any buildings. You can't have this mega, uh, biggest church in the world, uh, reputation. <laughs> have it in your house. Mm. When you can look, worship oh, God in your there, house, a, such mm. that mm. We are, you're not, you're, you're not, you're not, you're not become, you don't longer become an excuse So there's another thing, another perspective. Yeah. Look at Dubai, you know. That is just um, a subsection of the United Arab Emirates. Yeah. They don't, they, they do have, they don't work on, they work on Sundays, they don't Sunday work on... Sunday is like Monday, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Sundays, they are Monday. They don't work on Fridays. They observe prayer time. And yet, they are advancing extremely fast in every sector. They are the fastest okay. growing. The women are Muslim women. They cover their head but they are heavy science and technology. Women are going, are planning how they will go to the moon. Mm. Muslim women, they are religious, but they have not allowed that to stop them from being productive. Mm. So when we want to copy, we don't need to remove religion. Mm. We just need to open up our mind and decide this is what we want to do and change the culture of excuses it's and begin true. to be productive. So the real mm. problem, therefore, talk with Marco Dige, and is excuses, mm. yes. not religion. And then just to look at the opposite, Afghanistan. Yes. Now that they are stopping women from working or doing anything, and we can see how that it, it, that's country culture. is collapsing. Because the culture there is holding down women. Mm. It's not understanding that a woman can be a Muslim as well as a, an accomplished person. And so what happens is that the whole of that country... So the problem is not religion. We need to deal so with our culture. therefore, in our, as a, in our small conversation, <laughs> Professor Wale Shoenka, we, we therefore tell you <laughs> that, Nigeria, that religion is not our problem. Our problem. real problem is the excuses culture. we make. Mm -hmm. The culture the of excuses excuse we'll that there. we give to each other. Mm. You know, mm. that, 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 that's, that's the real problem, mm -hmm. the culture that's of excuses. And we need to tackle that. Separately. Hmm. I think, uh, let's take a few comments before we wrap up. I wanted to say that the <sighs> religions that we have, though mine I know too well, insist and encourage the use of the mind, the use of reasoning. Mm. Several verses in the Quran will say, can you not think? Is mm. the blind equal to the seeing? No. Research, find solutions, solve world problems. And that's how the countries that are around us are doing what they are doing today that we are, we are you know, religious are not doing. Joke Balobu says, Morao is totally off track in this discussion. No matter what language you are taught a skill, you should be able to perform Chinese perf perform Chinese as Chinese perform. But Nigerians can't. Why our attitudes and dis is why our attitudes and disposition are her. The comment is very nice. Okay. Yeah. Any more comments? We have to wrap up. Yeah, we on have this. menu. Um, do not forsake the gathering of the brethren, Morayo. Okay. This is not a godly suggestion. 
Uh, <laughs> the that's what <laughs> yeah, that is that a the scripture point. states that my people suffer for lack of knowledge. Yeah. Mm. I believe this is a very this is very clear in the scriptures. I love yeah. that. Yes, um, I love that. Godly oh, gathering she... can be a family. Oh, she, yes. yes. Can be a few families come yes. together. Yes. So that yes. the, the Bible yeah. says so. Oh, she yes. says, where two or more have gathered. Yes, God is already there. Let me go there. It's not a totally and I Bible. We have to wrap up. I think I think pretty much we've 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 come we've committed to this conversation mm -hmm. and um, we've agreed as that um, real problem is our excuse, our culture of excuse. We point fingers, even on this table, every small thing, government, every small thing is them. Mm. We hardly ever say we, what am I we doing? the people, what are we doing? That's why the ladies have said this thing, of, we the people, let's remind that we are also part of this and though it's, it's us that enters government. So we are just as problematic as the government, as the um, um, leaders that we elect. Mm. Okay, that's all we can take on this, but moving on to our, African themed Christmas. Whoop, whoop, yeah. whoop, 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 whoop. So what we had done since last week that every single day we're going to for 12 days of Christmas, starting from last week Thursday, mm -hmm. we're giving out 50,000 naira to uh, our fans. So mm -hmm. what we did, we opened up our, um, our our page and asked people to give us the reasons why they why they need that 50,000 naira and tag TVC Connect. Many have. We trickle down the number to about, I think, about 20 or 25. We now put all the people together and all the numbers are there. So we're just going to pick randomly somebody and call the person. Hopefully, we have the person's phone number. I'd like to hear the person's voice and um, call them up and tell them they're the winners and send them the 50,000 naira immediately. So um, I'm not even sure if we Who's send going to? So, yeah. Let's speak. Shuffle, shuffle, mm, shuffle, shuffle. Shuffle it where we can see. Yeah. Shuffle, 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 shuffle. Let's shuffle. speak. Yeah. And this money came from that no, our money. The table. Put it on the table. This money okay. came from that money where we told where, where we told our fans to put money together, and we got about eight hundred and eighty thousand naira in total. Yes. So of which we've been giving out fifty thousand naira each, and mm -hmm. we're giving to some of our fans. So please, who is the next winner of the fifty thousand naira? And the winner is Adedokun Adiola Gray. Why does he or she deserve? She says, your view, um, it would be a great pleasure if I'm giving this money. I sell recharge cards and I also make hair. This money will be used to expand by buying more and selling more recharge cards. And as a young lady, I also make wigs to sell, so I have more tools. Oh, I would really appreciate the so offer. Good. God bless you, ladies of your view. Adedoku, Adeola, Grace. Congratulations. 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 Okay. So we'll be sending the money to her and... Uh, Hopefully one day I would love to really meet all these guys, these 12 yes. people, and have a small, nice celebration. Yeah. It would be nice to have them over. But thank you. That's all we can take on the show today. Um, have a great day. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye for now.